Dear friends, hello and welcome to my show. Our book for today is Goldfinger, written by Ian Fleming and published by Penguin. The book comprises of some 354 interesting pages, but through this video clip, we are trying to summarize it for you. I'm sure many of you must have read this book or seen the movie. I recently finished reading it once again, but each time the thrill was no less, and each time there was an adrenaline rush where the narration is anchored by the precision of Fleming's prose. The signature dialogue of the book comes from none other than with a villain Goldfinger himself when he threatens Bond and says, Mr. Bond, they have a saying in Chicago, once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, the third time it is enemy action. Well, if you are a golfer, a frequent traveler, a car lover, or you like glamour, or you are a judo and karate exponent, or even an avid reader, or an adventurer, you are definitely in for a treat as far as this book is concerned. I would now like to take you through the plot of this book in a, in a, in a, in a brief. Fleming structured the novel in three sections, happenstance, coincidence and enemy action, which was how Goldfinger described Bond's three coincidental meetings with him. And these meetings are very interesting. So let us start with happenstance. While changing planes in Miami airport after closing down on a Mexican heroin smuggling operation, British Secret Service agent James Bond is asked by Junius DuPont, a rich American business whom he had briefly met and gambled with in Casino Royal, to watch Auric Goldfinger with whom DuPont is playing canasta. It is a kind of a rummy game in order to discover if he is cheating. Bond quickly realizes that Goldfinger is indeed cheating with the aid of his female assistant Jill Masterton who is spying on DuPont's cards. So, uh, so, so what DuPont is saying is actually correct. Bond then blackmails Goldfinger into admitting it and paying back DuPont's lost money. He also has a brief affair with Masterton while he is undertaking a train journey. Back in London, Bond's superior, one Mr. M, tasks him with the purpose of how Goldfinger is smuggling gold out of the country. So, <coughs> Bond is put on a particular job. M also suspects Goldfinger is connected to Smirch, which is a Soviet army counter espionage and financing the western networks with this gold. Bond visits the Bank of England for a briefing with Colonel Smithers on the methods adopted by Goldfinger, Goldfinger smuggling. Let us come to coincidence now. Bond contrives to meet and have a round of golf with Goldfinger. Goldfinger attempts to win the golf, golf match by cheating, but Bond is no less. He also cheats a little to win. So Bond turns the table on Goldfinger, beating him in his game, in the game. He is subsequently invited. He is subsequently invited to Goldfinger's mansion near Reculver, where narrowly, where he narrowly escapes being caught on the camera looking over the house. Goldfinger introduces Bond to his factotum, a Korean name of Job, who loves cat meat and is yellow in skin. Bond is, has been issued a, by MI6, an Aston Martin DB Mark III car. Bond trains Goldfinger as he takes his vintage Rolls Royce silver horse, which is adapted with armor plating and armor plated glass, via air ferry to Switzerland and the vehicle is being driven by odd job. Bond manages to trace Goldfinger in a warehouse in Geneva, where he finds that the armor of the Goldfinger's car is actually white gold, cast into panels <coughs> at his Kent refinery. So he discovers the, the fraud that is going around and how Goldfinger is uh, connected to, to it. When the car reaches Goldfinger's factory, 
in Switzerland that in Enterprises Oric, he recast the gold from the armor panels into aircraft seats and fits them into a Mecca chartered airline in which he holds a large stake. The gold is finally sold in India at a vast margin and this is how he integrates India into the novel. Meanwhile, Bond foils an assassination attempt and on Goldfinger by Jill Masterton's sister Tilly to avenge Jill's death at Goldfinger's hands. He had painted a body with gold paint which killed her. Bond and Tilly attempt to escape when the alarm is raised and they are caught again. Enemy action. Now let us come to enemy action. Bond is tortured by odd job when he refuses to confess his role in trailing Goldfinger. In a desperate attempt to survive being cut into two by a circular saw, Bond offers to work for Goldfinger, a ruse that Goldfinger initially refuses but then accepts. Bond and Tilly are subsequently captured and uh, taken to New York uh, in America. They are put to work as secretaries there for a meeting between Goldfinger, between Goldfinger and several gangsters including Spangle Mob and the Mafia who have been recruited to assist in Operation Grand Slam, the stealing of the United States Gold Reserve in Fort Knox. One of the gang leaders, Helmut Springer, refuses to join the operation when he learns the operation includes the killing of the inhabitants of Fort Knox by introducing poison in the water. As a consequence, he is killed by no one else but our job again. And now we are reaching the climax. Bond manages to conceal a capsule containing a message into the toilet of Goldfinger's private plane. He hopes it will be found and sent to Pinkerton's, which is a kind of a national detective agency, where his friend and counterpart, an ex-counterpart, Felix Leto, now works. So uh, this is the last uh, uh, bit that Bond can try. So Operation Grand Slam commences and it turns out that Leto has indeed found and acted upon Bond's message. A battle commences but Goldfinger escapes. Tilly, a lesbian, hopes that one of the gang leaders, Pussy Gellar, who happens to be a lesbian, uh, uh, the gang leader of a lesbian uh, burglars, will save her. But that is not the case because uh, she is, because Tilly is killed by odd job. Goldfinger, odd job and the mafia bosses all escape in the melee. Bond is drugged before his flight back to England only wo- and only wakes up to find he has been captured once again by Goldfinger where they are rescued where uh, when he uh, when Goldfinger hijacks a BOAC aircraft. Bond manages to break a window causing a depressurization that throws our job out of the plane. He then fights and strangles Goldfinger at gunpoint. He forces a coup to ditch the aircraft in the sea near the Canadian coast where they are rescued by a nearby weather ship. So all in all, Goldfinger is an outstanding novel of Ian Fleming. He wrote this book in Jamaica where he had built his house. The book has three main chapters, main parts and under that it has 23 chapters. It was published in 1959. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this brief briefing about the book and next week we will come out with another book so if you like the the, the the program kindly subscribe for it thank you